On the evening of November the 16th, 1940, teenager Minnie Stott was raped and murdered in a deserted garage yard. An opportunistic killing or a sexual predator. I'm Kat Park. Join me with your favourite tipple as we delve into the mysterious case of Minnie Stott Unsolved. The year is 1940, the location Bolton, Greater Manchester. Britain has been at war for over a year now. Rationing has come into force and life is uncertain and worrying for many. Minnie Stott, known to her friends as Peggy, is a 17-year-old girl living at 124 Clarence Street, Bolton and is the only child of James and Alice. Minnie has recently left school and is the manageress at Hanbury Grocery Shop near the junction of Elgin Street and Eskert Street in Halliwell. Mature in nature and in her looks due to the unique glasses she wears, Minnie looks older than her 17 years, which she uses to get into local dances and pubs. Like many teenagers and young adults during wartime, to escape the grim reality, Minnie loves to dance and to visit local dance halls along with her friends. She has recently signed up to take dance lessons and is a regular in the dance halls in Bolton. November the 16th is a Saturday and Minnie has been working in the grocers all day, returning to Clarence Street at 6.40pm. She starts to get ready for a night out at the cinema, deciding on her best outfit, a green tweed skirt, flesh-coloured stockings and brown shoes. It is a bitter November evening. Minnie chooses to wear a blue full-length woolen coat and drapes a beautiful green scarf around her neck to finish off the outfit. A little over an hour after returning home from work and, according to her father, Minnie rushes out of the door at 7.45pm, telling her father she is off to the cinema and won't be back late. Fifteen minutes later at 8pm, Minnie visits her mother, working as a waitress at the United Cow Products Cafe on Deansgate, Manchester City Centre. Deansgate is approximately 10 miles away from Bolton by road. Minnie has called in to say hello and let her mother know that she's off to the cinema that evening. It is overheard that she's off to the Queen's Cinema in Bolton to see the latest film, Bulldog Drummond at Bay. Her mother warns her not to stay out too late and is worried as a girl had been found raped and strangled in Liverpool only a few weeks previous. Minnie assures Alice she will be fine and waves goodbye. This is the last time Alice would see her daughter alive. It's just a little before midnight and PC Harry Brooks is making a routine check on garages around Bradshaw Gate in Bolton. In the pitch black of night in a secluded part of Bradshaw Gate, he comes across a young woman lying on her back, her head close to the bottom of the closed shutter. PC Brooks then notices a red mark around the young woman's neck. Her clothes are disarranged and the PC can see her knickers are missing. Checking for a pulse, he finds that the girl is dead. The dead girl is identified as Minnie Stott. Minnie's post-mortem reveals she has been a victim of a sex attack and has died from asphyxia due to strangulation. A red mark around her neck suggests a cord or thin scarf has been used to strangle her. Her green scarf is missing from the scene. There are no manual pressure marks either. 
the pathologist establishes that she has been murdered at approximately 10pm, a mere two hours after seeing her mother in Deansgate, Manchester. The case of Minnie Stott is one surrounded by mystery. There is a two hour gap between when she leaves her mother at 8pm and 10pm when she is murdered in Bolton. The final hours of this young girl, cut down in her prime, remain a mystery. What is incomprehensible with this horrific case is that even though Minnie is well known around Bolton and distinctive in looks, when the police ask for witnesses to come forward, no one does. Not one single person helps the police with their investigation. Saturday night in Bolton in 1940, especially around 10pm, would be teeming with people coming out of the very cinema that Minnie had supposedly gone to that evening. Men and women would have also been on their way home from the pubs. It was the exact cinema opposite the garages where Minnie was being subjected to a sex attack and then be murdered. How did no one hear this? And why is no one coming forward to help find Minnie's killer? The police initially focused their attention on a soldier that Minnie Stott had been seen with on the Thursday at approximately 9.30pm in a fish and chip shop in Bridge Street beside the local Palais de Dance, two days before her murder. According to her friend Emily Wilkes, the soldier had invited Minnie and Emily to the Founders Arms pub. They each had a couple of glasses of sherry with him before going off to the Palais de Dance at about 10pm. The soldier was later identified and found to have an alibi. The police released him on those grounds, allowing him to return to his unit. With very little to go on and with people either not knowing or not wanting to say where Minnie went after seeing her mother, the police investigation goes cold. Police finally get a breakthrough a few weeks later. A Manchester sweet shop owner reports that Minnie and another girl came into the shop at approximately 8.20pm on November the 16th. The owner tells police that Minnie bought sweets and the other girl bought cigarettes. The story can be quickly corroborated as the sweets were recovered from Minnie's handbag. Police appealed for this girl to come forward, but she never did despite the force's efforts. With no other leads to go on, the case goes cold. Almost two months after Minnie's death, a strange encounter in a cemetery opens the case up again. On January the 12th, Alice and Jim visited their daughter's grave when a woman, who did not identify herself, approached and told them a harrowing story about that fateful night on November the 16th. She tells them that Minnie had been with two other girls in Bradshaw Gate and was being followed by two men. Minnie was bundled into the car. The other two girls were said to have run off, leaving Minnie at the hands of the two men. As the new information reveals that Minnie may have been snatched off the street, the police appealed for the two girls with her that night to come forward. The two girls never did. Police could not trace the two men that were allegedly following the group of girls either. There are so many unanswered questions with Minnie's case. The main question being, why did no one come forward to help the police? 
speculation has arisen over the years that people were protecting Minnie's reputation. One theory is that she had turned to prostitution. Her friends either didn't want to tarnish her name or were prostitutes themselves and didn't want people to know it. Could that be the case? Could Minnie's killer have been indirectly shielded by her friends because of a veil of secrecy and prostitution? One final twist to the case came in 1995, when Maurice Coblet, a barber in Bolton, sent a letter to his local newspaper. Mr Coblet described how years earlier he had cut the hair of the son of one of the senior officers involved in the hunt for Minnie's killer. The police had traced the crime to a man in Bury, but the suspect had committed suicide before he could be arrested. The police at the time were satisfied that justice had been done. The murder of Minnie Stott to this day is considered to be officially unsolved by the Greater Manchester Police. Several critical pieces of evidence, including her post-mortem report, have gone missing. Minnie's parents went to their grave, never knowing what happened on that fateful night, not knowing the name of the person who took their beloved Minnie from them. There are simply more questions than answers to this unfortunate, sad case. I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories on this strange and perplexing case. Thanks for listening to the Murder and Wine Club. If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and review, and remember to tell your friends. Thank you for supporting the Murder and Wine Club podcast. We really do appreciate it. You can listen to all future episodes right now before anyone else by joining the Murder and Wine Club Access All Areas membership. You'll not only get an early episode access, but you'll have access to our psychic detective sessions with one of our resident psychic mediums, where we delve deeper into the cases. Head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash murder and wine and join today. The link is in the episode notes. Subscribe to Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Spotify, or wherever you are listening.